It's the final night in Manchester. Cheers, Cheers. 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 And retro-loving couple Terry and David are hoping to beat the others with a 70s revival. Whilst their guests sample the champers, Carly and Kira have a wander. Ah, wow! Find the run! Oh, my God. Oh, it's all quirky. <gasps> oh, look in the drawer. <gasps> oh, my God! 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 We found Terry's wigs. It was literally a drawer full of just hilarious wigs. And me and Kira love a fancy dress box. Yeah. Spice up your life, every boy, every girl. Spice up your life, people of the world. Swear to the left if you're having a good time. Shake it to the right if you know that you feel fine. All together now. You've got to clean the glasses up now so they look pretty. And decorate with giant prawns, complete with their heads. Lucky Carly. OK, darling, let's take it back to the 70s. Where's the glass hey, cherry? Oh, thank you. Florida prawn cocktail. Oh, my God, the massive. Oh, at least they're not in the sauce. Oh. oh. Right, we have Florida prawn cocktail, mm -hmm. so it's a retro revival. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> Children. Kira. <laughs> I'm sorry, babe. Right, I am going to try a prawn, guys, otherwise oh. I feel like... Oh. Yeah, I feel like it's you not right. You don't have to do on my part. Come on, like a bit chicken. Oh, sorry, guys. I've tried it. I'm happy I've tried it. Well, I think that deserves a round of applause. She's tried it. She's never, ever. Thank you. It was, it was poor. It's meal and it's ketchup. It's not healthy and clean eating. And then those big, dirty prawns with the big eyes. <laughs> it was amazing. It's I'm, your thing, isn't it's it? It's so my you, thing. You enjoyed it. Yeah, I could I tell you was loving it. it. If I could lick the bowl clean, I would have. Thank goodness you didn't. If I got a pick, I'd have rather neck the sprout juice again than add a prawn cocktail. <laughs> Terry and Dave, how have you two met? We actually met in Benidorm. <gasps> oh, you did, yeah. We did. Terry lived in Benidorm and I went on holiday there. Oh my god, I was so shocked to find out that there were a Benidorm couple. Because yeah, Benidorm is just, just like happy. oh, it's so tacky. I don't even know what a Benidorm couple is. What would a Benidorm it's couple like, be like? Uh, it's like British people that go out to Spain and the... Oh, live the Spanish dream. OK. That's one way to describe it. The best one of all is he asked me to marry him on the first date. No! <laughs> and I thought, do something quick. He's good looking, he's tall and he's got his own teeth. Marry <laughs> him. <laughs> the two of them are literally like soulmates. When you know, you know. When you know, you know, pet. They're absolutely super in love, and I love that. It's good. Yeah. Just like us. Aww. Aww. Ooh. As chicken is added to the marsala sauce, they encounter a slight hiccup. The microwave is just actually packed in. Do you think it might be the fuse? I think it might be the fuse. Get me, a, get me, leave that. Get me a screwdriver, quick. Calm down, not quick. Calm down. Yeah, quickly. No, calm down. I said. At least nobody's overreacting. The rice is heated in the oven instead, and it's time to plate up. And the sizzling 70s continues. There it is, chicken in marsala wine sauce with a tennis ball of rice and grey-green peas. Mm. Oh, cool. <laughs> it's an American-Italian dish, which was a typical dish to serve in the 1970s. Mm. So just, just go with it. Enjoy. The chicken is, like, so well, soaking. Well, I'm glad you like it. It's gorgeous. What's it? Is it... Um... Pan fried in a different coat. It's actually pan fried in flour. I love it. It's great. Do you? Isn't it? Do. You've Chicken. made my night Chicken that you salt. love it. I think a bit less mushrooms because no. I'm not really that Are you not a huge mushroom person. Not a huge mushroom. Just really a bit gaggy and mushroomy, and it's not. Yeah, I weren't really feeling it. And this is my <laughs> favourite dish of the whole week. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, the main course was absolutely beautiful. As romance blossoms in the kitchen, love is on the cards in the bedroom. Oh, there's a card in there. Soppy Valentine's card. I feel really rude opening this, but we'll do it anyway. Go for it. <laughs> Must be funny. You can share it with the group later. In the kitchen, nothing says a more like grilled toast. Martin, it's amazing. It's a winner. It is the winner. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Setting hearts a flutter, it's the starter, a duo of pate with Melba toast. To accompany the starter, we have paired wines, and we've paired a lovely French wine for you today. Sophie, would you like to taste it and see if it's okay? I will. I'm you sure. sure. <laughs> Fine, yeah. I like any wine. 
wine's wine. I go to the corner shop with a five, I normally <laughs> You won't get this for a five or so, please. <laughs> go on, Yeah, help me tell. Chicken liver patty is quite strong, so just How is it? try it and just see what you think. It might be a little bit overpowering, but... I'm absolutely, like, petrified of patty. It is a bit strong tasting, I'm afraid. So don't, you know, it's a little bit strong tasting. It's all right if I stick with the pickle. Yeah. <laughs> Good I'm really sorry, I tried, but like... I like chicken, I like liver, I like mackerel, so it's all things and flavours that I like. I'm, I'm really enjoying this. It was the best mackerel pate I've had. I'm sorry, because I know you make mackerel pate. I never tell you to love it. But I do love your mackerel pate, but... Roots was better. Ooh. The starter was so good, I couldn't even speak. Cos you stuffed so much in your mouth. Thanks, Ruth. I actually want the recipe. <laughs> Off, Ruth. <laughs> Just to shut them up. <laughs> so, Warren, I did notice your biceps yesterday and today. That's nice so, to notice. Yeah, so you. you obviously work out. Or is that your job, or...? No, I just like to keep fit. Do you have the squeeze? <laughs> Go on. Ooh, oh, yeah, in there. Are they? Babe, hey, can I rock. get some of them? <laughs> yeah, right. I'm a rock. Ah, uh, see through that. I know that game. Young strapping Warren. That's what she was. Young thinking. strapping Warren. That's what she was thinking all about. Well, she didn't make a play for you, did she? Yes, I've not been to the gym in six years. <laughs> I want to give it here. Feels like your chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> Did I come second in the biceps competition? You think you came last? <laughs> oh, let him down gently, Ruth. Everyone liked the start apart from Sophie. Yeah. Hopefully she likes the main course. Probably not. Ever the optimists, Ruth and Martin put their lamb into roast and turned their attention to the veg. I don't know whether people have heard of some pen. We've got to make ourselves look a bit more trendy because we're old. It's a trendy vegetable, if there is such a thing, served in trendy restaurants. It's just getting trendier by the minute. This is a showstopper. Let's give it to them. It's ready! Rack of lamb with the hippest, most happening veg in town. Oh, thank you. Oh, pigs in blankets. Is that what a samphire is, the pigs in the blankets? Oh, no, Sophie, no. it's the green one, the vegetable. <laughs> oh, I see! <laughs> the salty green bean, all that hype for our salty green bean. Not a sausage. What we want you to do with the wine, if you can, is not sip it, but to try and taste it. Do you want Lots us to of... spit it back out, like? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sophie, you can swallow it. Oh. 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 I think our guests are loving the wine. I've got a bad problem with anyone, like, tasting wine and swelling it no, around. That's like, very wrong. I, I absolutely really just don't like it. I just no, think it's it... so pretentious. No, it's just not. It absolutely no, it's puts not. me off So, I, I think they're great. They have got a they're really... lovely people, but I don't like that. Oh, that is a nice sausage. I didn't think the main was anywhere near as good as ours. It was nice, it was really good, but it wasn't amazing like ours was. You can always tell how good the food is when <laughs> everyone It's all going really quiet. That lamb was absolutely beautiful, and it was just one of the nicest meals I've ever had. Are you not going to try your lamb, Sophie? I'm in my mouth right now. Oh, oh OK. Mm. Oh. I mean, it's having it's beautiful lamb, but I just... Yeah. No, I'm glad, you, I'm glad you tried it. Can you take it off? Hang on, what's she doing? Ow! Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I just, I just couldn't... You didn't share the lamb then, did you? They did, she yeah. spat it in his mouth. I am. <laughs> I thought I'd try it again, but then I changed my mind, so I just put it in his mouth. It's, just, it's a thing that we, we do. Sometimes I get her to chew my food up for me first and spit it into my mouth. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Is that where the cheesy sauce come from then? Oh, <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> no. Got no love. You don't no. do that at a dinner party. So when he's kissing you, he's like six in your mouth, does he? Disgusting. No, so that's not right. As much as I love the two of them, that just was not for me. You, oh, no love. I'm not having it. Babe, that's things. just a connection that we have that no one else does. This is just another reason why we are the winning couple. We are. Mm. I, I can't see me chewing a bit of meat and passing it over to Martin, can you? No. No. <laughs> Good. It's night one in Suffolk, where scrap merchant Peter Gillings is hoping to bag a grand with his no-fuss menu. Cheers! Cheers, everyone. Cheers. 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 Cheers to a great night. While he gets busy in the kitchen, his guests have a nose around the scrapyard. Oh, my God. So I'm going to so wear the hat. Is it all good, though, or is it...? So many buttons. I'm so confused. Do you reckon, oh! do you reckon it plays it? It's these ones that work. <laughs> 
Does anyone play piano? <laughs> it's like the 80s. It sounds it like the 1980s. It's not quite Duran Duran. It's just super cool, though. The others found it really interesting, but I have never seen so much toot in one room. Toot? Is that Suffolk speak for tat? Better be careful, we don't find a bomb in here. Famous last words. Don't, I just want to press it. There's something about Shall it we? that makes me really want to do it. It's not going to do anything, is it? We don't well, know. I know, but we're we pretending. don't know. Go on, then. You do know it's not connected to anything, right? Five, four, <laughs> three, three, two, one. I'm <laughs> oh, only joking. <laughs> Anti climax. Carlton, I loved straight away. The fact that it kind of just walked in and you just beamed really funny and upbeat personality. I really, really like him. Scrapyard still intact. Peter puts the finishing touches to his seafood starter. It was a little bit tricky to dish out because I've never stuck a jar in the middle of the start before, but hey, first time for everything. Here's Peter's seafood platter with lumpfish eggs. Try not to look too excited, Lucy Ann. <laughs> OK, guys, what we've got to eat tonight, as you can see, is a mixture of seafood. In the middle, what do we have? <laughs> I'm guessing, it's, I'm guessing it's caviar. I am guessing it's caviar, but well, is it a particular type I've never or... seen that in my Almost, life. almost caviar. It's lumpfish. OK. It's, it's, it's just cheaper. Cool. <laughs> You're supposed to be trying to impress them. It does really look like frog spawn. Yeah. Well, no. No, frog spawn is like glummidgy, glummidgy, sort of snotty. Well, I'm glad we cleared that one up. I don't want to be really rude. Yeah. But I don't eat fish or okay. seafood. Would you be finished if I just had a bread roll? Well, the starter was obviously my worst nightmare. It was fish. I don't have fish fingers. I don't have tinned salmon or anything like that. I can't eat fish. It's, maybe it's the salt, because it comes out of the sea. Have you ever tried peanuts? I don't like nuts. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, do you know what? But I'm not a fussy eater. I think that Lucy Ann probably made a slightly bad impression. The starter I really liked. It was absolutely delicious. We were so shocked when we went downstairs. When did all of that start? I really liked it when I was a kid, mm. like playing with soldiers and stuff, and like these places were everywhere when I was a kid. But then they gradually oh, whoopsie! And down there ain't many left now. So. You know, the spillage. Yeah. We should have actually we've bought you a beer. You should all realise from now, I do have a hole at the some like at the bottom <laughs> of my mouth. So, but food, you did it so gracefully. It fell so gracefully. Yes. <laughs> if you want to just keep still, I can take care of that for you. Peter. I could see the lady was in distress. And uh, rather than her to carry on in being embarrassed, I thought I would help her out with a quick wipe or a, a lick of the uh, skin. And they say chivalry's dead. I took it all in jest. Probably would have let him. <laughs> Sounds like you missed your chance there, Peter. The starter, I thought, went OK. One person didn't like it, but she didn't particularly like seafood so or fish. On to the main, and Peter serves up his chilli. It's a bit like an army kitchen. And that looks like army rations, also known as beef and pork chilli with rice. Mmm. It's nicer than what I was yeah, expecting. Yeah, it is as well. I was a bit unsure with the pork and the beef. Yeah, that was something that I was I a bit... normally just do a beef chilli. I wasn't sure what to expect with the beef and pork chilli, but it worked, it was nice. It's got a nice kick to it, and it's not too spicy. The food was really simple, but because of him, I just felt it was all made with effort and love. I think it was OK, yeah, no complaints. No one asked for more, but then again, they'd had one course already. So your tattoo on your arm, I'm curious. This one is just pretty simple. There's a B and there's an anchor, and my name's Bianca, so it's Bianca. Oh, I get it. <laughs> like Got it. it. <laughs> like it. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it's not rocket science. She's called Bianca. I would probably have, in Hebrew, Man of God. Are you Jewish? No. So I'm Catholic. Why... Okay. It's interesting you should say that because I am confused because I am a Catholic, but I am a circumcised Catholic, so I don't know which way I go. Oh my God! <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in uh, modern terms they call that TMI. Too much. T too much information. I'm with you on that one. The fact that Peter mentioned his nether regions at the dinner table was something. Honestly, was the most shocked that I think I've ever been. I'd rather not know that about him. That's a bit personal. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. It's night one in Essex, where three couples are competing to throw the best dinner party. Hosts Edith and Martin are hoping their African-inspired menu will impress their rivals and bag them a grand. Well done, babes. Nice. While they crack on with the starter, things are about to get hairy for Anna and Ian. Baby, look at the shoes. Oh, they're very <laughs> fancy, aren't they? Yeah, you'd have to try this. Come oh, on, baby. Will it, fit, will it fit me? Yes. 
Baby, you actually look sexy. No, you do. No, he doesn't. Can you do an Ozzy Osbourne? <laughs> That's a no, then. <laughs> it's like he's in the room. How's it looking, babe? They're looking all right. In the kitchen, the starter's ready. Just the accompanying sauces to go. Chilli sauce and that brown stuff. This is called shito. Is it? I know the name doesn't sound appealing. It's basically, um, I think it's a Ghanaian sauce, like an African chilli sauce. One for the shopping list there. Lamb kebabs with plantain and a dollop of shito. And for Danny and Shearer, a shitoless tofu version. Wow, oh, I'm starving. Thank you. Thanks. So let's eat, guys. Tuck in and let us know how, what you think about oh, it. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Can we use our hands or do I need to of use course, the fork? Of course, no, you, you can not, use your hands. Food. Really spicy. I like hot food. What, what is the sauce? Brace yourself, Ian. Um, so you've got shito, and that's actually the name of the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> you like it? It's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> My tongue is actually on fire. It's I like really hot. I'm used to spices, but mm. this is mm. like too hot. It's, yeah, it's, it's beyond. Is... Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Oh, it's just too spicy. I think... I think. I think if they had brought it down a couple of grades heat, it would have been really yeah. nice. I need chili going... to calm me down. <gasps> Oh, wow. oh my god! Did he really just drink that? I love spicy food. I really do. But I was literally on fire. I think that's your own fault. That's better. Well. <laughs> That was nice. Oh, that was really gross. <laughs> when Danny drank the sauce, I did find it slightly offensive. You know, it's a bit, it's a bit of a rugby player's type trick that you do in front of your mates in a curry house with oh. a bunch of drunken blokes, not round someone else's house. The starter was mixed feelings. The main critiques that we got that it was really, really spicy. Yeah, too spicy, which I told you not to do. You didn't tell me, actually. You Not once did you say that I was putting in too much pepper. Not once. Yeah, it's definitely your fault. I'd leave it if I were you, Martin. Guys, so what's your deal? How did you meet? Whoa. Mm. We met on a night out. So as soon as I saw Edith, I just felt, wow. He literally came over. <laughs> That's when I knew I was in there. Like, oh. I knew. Oh. So then I started acting like hard to get again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have been together for seven years. We actually met online. And but... He was charming with a corduroy jacket. I was very oh. And I said, he's a keeper. We met at school. We met at school. <laughs> oh uh, Danny wrote a song about it. When we were 17. It's... A place where loving you <laughs> seemed far away oh. from me. Oh, I can do a song for you, baby. Oh, well, now you have to do the song. I'm in love with an Englishman in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it needs a bit of work. Thank you very right, much. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight, we're in Greater Manchester, and first host Kay Drennan is out to impress three strangers with her menu of family favourites. While her guests mingle, Kay gets on with the starter. I hope they like spice because I've actually put a little bit more of a kick in it than I would normally do. She garnishes with bay leaves and blackberries and adds the toast. This has got to be worth a thousand pounds, seriously, hasn't it? If it's just for the way I put the bay leaf and the blackberry and the pomegranate seeds on. Indeed. After making it all look pretty, here it is. Chicken liver pate with homemade chutney. I don't even know where to I've start. Quite easy pate. It's lovely. Are you married, dear? No, I'm single. All oh, right. No one to put up me. Really? Yeah. What would be your ideal guy? My ideal man would have to be a big, strong, strapping guy, someone like Jason Statham. Oh, right, Ooh. OK. <laughs> <laughs> and a few people say, actually, look like Stath Jason Statham, but without the square head. <laughs> no, you're you that type. You need to put about two stoner. And a Jason Statham mask? Not to me, he doesn't have to say. There's a little like this, but maybe he's just there. Or lack of it. He could be my Jason. Needs for a little bit of way on, but by Friday, you never know. Depends on how much he eats, I suppose. Diane, yes, she's definitely looking for a Jason Statham, but I'm afraid. Eh -eh. No, because I've got my missus. Bad luck, Diane. Interesting biting action. The starter was really, really nice. I loved it. I got to uh, the end of my bread and then was going to ask for some more bread, but then realised I, I didn't want any more bread. <laughs> Is that old Socrates again? I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. It left a bit of a bitter aftertaste in your mouth. It weren't very nice. Who do you think I look like? I think you look like 
Tanya Turner out of Footballers Wives. Really? Yeah. Well done. I would have said Barbara Windsor, but yeah. I'm not. No. I'm not. <laughs> it's all right, Paul. Wait when we get to you. Kate does not look like Barbara Windsor at all. I'm more of Barbara Windsor than she is. Look at these bad boys. Go oh, now. Stop it, missus. Time for the main. Kay checks on her breasts. It's all looking fine, as long as I remember to take the cocktail sticks out. Good idea. I think I've got a cocktail stick stuck in my chicken. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Released, released. Thank goodness. With veg added, here it is. Stuffed chicken with seasonal veg, minus the cocktail sticks. Oh, this is beautiful, Kay. Mm. Really? Thank you. And I must admit, I don't usually like spinach, but that's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, aubergine. <laughs> You're right there, Deanne. <laughs> cocktail stick. Okay. Uh oh. Cocktail stick. You could have choked on it. What would have happened if I'd have choked on it? I'm sure Jason Statham would have stepped in. Oh, I've got one as well. Oh. 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 It's taking out the competition. You're taking, okay, okay. you're taking the Game of Thrones approach <laughs> to the <laughs> well, Don't try and kill me at dinner. It's a simple request. You serve olives on cocktail sticks, you serve cherries on cocktail sticks. What's the problem with somebody pulling a couple of cocktail sticks out of a chicken breast? I'm a student, so what do you think I study? I think you do something on the lines of maybe science. I'm actually um, at university doing business management and I have not taken a loan out. I work my way through. And what do you so do to work your way through? I'm a business consultant and marketing strategist, so I deal with failing businesses and start-up businesses. Ian seems quite intelligent, yeah. Definitely. And I have been studying business solely for six years and done consultancy for a number of different businesses. Keeping up, Deanne. And he was, like, talking about, like, oh, I do this and I do that, and I just lost it. I just... I wasn't listening. I'm sorry, I wasn't. My turn. Um, what do you think I do for a living? An hairdresser. You think I'm a hairdresser? Yeah. Because I'm blonde. No, I'm just saying you've got some sort of, yeah. sort of personality. Yeah, blonde people hairdresser. <laughs> do I look like a hairdresser? Don't bring me into this. I think because hairdressers tend to chit-chat and they're very talk a lot and gossip, maybe you got that impression of me that I talk a lot and I'm mm. gossip. And I've I wonder what I'm going to have for dinner tonight. I've got those baked beans in the fridge. I could have them on toast with cheese on top. That'd be nice. Yeah. Maybe I've had a bit too much bread this week. I don't know. Maybe it was that. I don't know. Huh? Sorry. Where were we? So while our host fries his hog's pudding... Sizzle-tastic. Upstairs... What are we going to find? Rob and Holly are poking around. <gasps> Oh, my goodness. Oh, check this out. Oh! Maybe he's a stripper, Rob. I think you may be right with the stripper thing. Do you reckon? Because when it's all gone... <laughs> no! I was quite shocked to find the uniform, um, especially as Reese had told us that he had a completely different job. Back in the kitchen, scallops are seared and peas are dolloped. Hello, I'm very happy to see you. Smiley face. Go, oh, you are a one. Sausage and scallops are plumped on top and it's ready. Add a bit of pretty to the plate. That is a thing of beauty. Here we go. Lime Bay scallops with West Country hogs pudding on a bed of pea puree. Oh, wow. Let me reach behind you there. It's amazing. Olive, that's amazing. That's for you. And Tina. Oh, that's stunning. Thank you. You're very welcome. So, hogs pudding is a Devon version of black pudding. It's a white pudding, they don't use any blood in it. I've got to say, the scallops are cooked perfectly. They really are. The flavours are absolutely perfect. Well done. It's it's absolutely lovely. The scallops, for me, were slightly overcooked, a little bit stringy, so I think they could have come out of the pan a little bit sooner. That's not what you said downstairs. I'm a massive fan of scallops, but I don't think Reese had seasoned them. I've not had a hog's pudding before. Um, it was all right. I don't know if I'd have it again. But I think it went well with the dish. So, Reese, earlier, Rob and I had a little wander around the house and uh, we found this along with the uniform. Ah. Have we all seen the full Monty? I knew it! I knew oh. it, Holly! No, I said that! <laughs> yeah, but I had a little, little moment of thinking about it as well. I, think I know, said it? that he was a stripper. Were you really a stripper? Yeah, Rocket Reese. Reese. Raunchy Rocket Reese. There's a reason I had to move away from where we used to live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's that laugh again. 
I don't really want to think about what was going through her mind. <laughs> and maybe it's best we don't explore that. Yes, let's not. Seriously, paint stripping, yes. But clothes stripping, no. <laughs> Tell her the truth, Reese. The other evening I said I was uh, transporting aluminium tubing from one continent to another. So with the uniform and that job description. Hi, look. <laughs> no way! Do you know what's going through my head now? Shit, Raising he his hat. No, has he flown me to any of my destinations? <gasps> Do you oh. look like an aluminum tube? I think the aluminum, aluminum tube oh. is the aeroplane. It's the aeroplane. Oh, I thought he meant... <laughs> <laughs> I think Rob thought initially that I've got an aeroplane full of aluminum tubes and I'm flying them from A to B. I did have a little bit of a blonde moment. We all have them. Speak for yourself, sweetheart. Starter has gone down really well with everyone and uh, now time to move on to the main course and continue the upward trend. Tickety-boo! How's that pork looking? Crackly, crackling. It's not going to be very pretty on a plate. But it's going to taste good. Pork massacred? Well, carved, it's time to plate up. It's not going to win any beauty contest, but it's packed full of flavour. I'm pretty sure it's going to win me that first prize. Trotters crossed. Figgy piggy with sausage and beans. Lord Robbo of Geezerville. <laughs> Magic. Magic. I'm not the biggest fan of pork, if I'm honest. No. Reese. Um, and I don't think I had any stuffing in mine. So I'm really sorry you didn't get any of the stuffing. <laughs> I could go and get you some if you want to. Is there some? I can probably find you a little bit of the stuffing. Go on, just to try a bit. Could go you, on. Can you get me some? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, thank I'm you. sensing a theme well. here. You might as well have called it something, piggy, sausage and beans, because the figgy had gone for a burton in the kitchen. So there's some stuffing, and it's quite OK to eat that with your fingers. The pork's a, a little bit overcooked, it's a little bit Yeah, I'm, dry. I'm, I'm with you there. The cassoulet didn't have a lot of flavour to it. Reese's figgy piggy actually made me feel a bit sicky wicky. <laughs> I'd clearly left the meat to rest just for a little bit too long and it had dried out. With the starter getting a mixed reaction, back in the kitchen, Ari once more flies into action. That's ready. That's ready. That's nearly ready. Ari! Ari! Yeah, well. We're doing really well. There it is! Veal in a mushroom sauce. Let's hope this one goes down really well. Crikey, don't say that to Paul. Oh, thank you. Dig in, everyone. All Enjoy. Right. Okay. Cheers. Bon appetit. The main was <sighs> veal, completely invaded with mushrooms. I was really hoping to avoid them all week, and today they were everywhere. Does everyone well, like veal? Everybody happy with veal? Not overly fond of beef. And I did try this. I had a couple of mouthfuls, but I did not like the taste. That's I right. think you're more disappointed than I am. I'm really disappointed. Because I thought, you know, it's... Pretty good. Yeah. Um, it's pretty good. It's not good enough. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Back at the table, and Anthony has a question for his hosts. Do you class yourselves as posh? I think that because we're foreigners, we're completely classless. Mm. And so I think we're exempt from the system. Oh, but your garden's the size of two Wembley stadiums. That is not <laughs> anything <laughs> less than posh. You're making the classic yeah. mistake, though. Yeah. I think people mistake having a lot of things with being a certain class. She did not like being called posh. <laughs> in she the got slightest. very defensive. Yeah, extremely defensive. They seem to be equating money with privilege, but they're making a lot of assumptions, aren't they? If you have a pool and a piano, unfortunately, <laughs> it makes you posh. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Paul? <laughs> Can I just quickly interject this? When we first met, you had both a piano and a pool. Oh! More oh. evidence oh. than Karen oh. is posh. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> can you please get out of that one? <laughs> I don't think I'm posh. Amanda and Ari are posh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bit disappointed in the main, but I'm pretty confident about the dessert. I know we can bring it back. Mm. I think this is this is going to be a winner, so ready to go. If I can get the same sort of reaction out of Anthony tonight that Karen got last night, I'm going to be one happy bunny. And there it is, rhubarb tart and strawberry sorbet. This dessert is mmm, or noises to that effect. <laughs> yeah, I'd leave that to Anthony. Enjoy, everybody. Lovely. Mm. Well, it's really nice. <laughs> I'm not really a fan of rhubarb. I've definitely tried a little bit. Well, sorbet, I want to taste one. That is amazing. Sorbet wasn't to my liking. It was a bit too cold for my liking. <laughs> well, that's sorbet for you. Mmm. <laughs> that sorbet is literally like... Mm. Oh, God, here we go. Fifty shades of Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
the noises that come from him, you could put them all Static. together and make a fantastic ringtone. So I'm going to get you ticking. <laughs> so, good noises from Anthony, but is it enough to bag the prize? Amanda and Ari need 34 to win. I think we've fallen pretty far below my expectations for the night. The food tonight, some of the dishes, parts of different dishes, for us anyway, yeah, uh, has let them down slightly. We're definitely not completely out of the running yet. This is the big game, and we're here to win. We will not be happy if we ain't won this. <laughs> I enjoyed the food that Ari and Amanda had done tonight. I wasn't too keen. But the night was great, so we're giving them a 15. 15. Tonight, we're scoring Ari and Amanda. Mm, mm, mm. Hold it right there, let's all find out together. <laughs> Moment of truth. <laughs> Are we ready? Everybody brace yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. In third place, Amanda and Ari. <laughs> oh, well done. Anthony and Fiona scored 13. In second place, Karen and Paul. Yes! <laughs> And that means in first place we have Anthony and Fiona. Oh, come on, Anthony! Ah, we're going to Japan! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes! oh. I would have liked to do better than third. Um, that's last, dead last. I would have preferred <laughs> to not be dead last, but, you know, whatever. I guess we'll get over it eventually. <laughs> Could take a decade or two. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> There's only one way to put it, isn't it? <laughs> I was really excited about second place. I didn't mind. It was really good. Yeah. Yeah, happy yeah. days. Done well. Not last, so can't complain. <laughs> yeah, nice one. Cheers. Oh, it's static. I'm on this like. Oh, oh, oh. He thinks he's speechless. Yeah, he yeah. doesn't know what it means. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't get that low. Let's get a piece ready, baby. <laughs> To be fair, I'm glad we didn't win, otherwise I'd have to have broken out the caterpillar again. <laughs> oh, and that would have done me back in, so... It's the third night in Sussex with Food Bank Charity Director Paula throwing an evening of Waste Not, Want Not in her attempt to grab a grand. I'm feeling confident that they're going to have a great evening. If I win, it's a bonus, but the winning will be the smiles when they eat my food. Best crack on, then. As Paula hacks into stale bread for her starter, a couple of her guests have spotted some clues. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Has she recycled our dinner? <laughs> from somewhere, <laughs> from the bins? Probably yesterday's. Do you think she goes through bins? Yeah, does she just eat out-of-date food? The way that her menu was worded and then seeing all that on the table, I was like, oh, my God. Regurgitated food? Yeah. Oh, well... Yeah, let, let's not go there. Good idea. Back in the kitchen, Paula's dishing up her starter. The bread was one day past its best before date. They will never know. Mmm, aqua cotta. You can't beat a bit of boiled water. Especially when it's got a load of vegetables in it. And there it is, aqua cotta, Italian peasant broth. Does anybody here speak Italian? Tiny bit. <gasps> Do you know what it means? Well, aqua means water. Yes. Does it mean poor water? No, it means boiled water. How do you feel about eating boiled water? Well, I think if the water's boiled, it's going to be clean, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a relief. So, dig in, guys. I'll tell you a little bit about what you're eating. Lovely. It smells nice. Uh, in medieval Italy, they didn't have a lot of food. They would use this broth to um, soak up old stale bread. How are you doing, Josie? I'm, I'm a bit nervous to eat it, to be honest. Why? <laughs> Why? Well, there was a conversation about the water was boiled, so where's wow. the water from before you boiled it? <laughs> the tap. Right, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, it was from the tap. It's, it's, it's all OK. I think the boiled water got her. The fact that it was peasant food and it was boiled water, what, did... Did she get it out the drain? And she said, no, no, it's just from the tap. Then I enjoyed Paula's starter. This is more than vegetable in here. What are the... Have you got garlic in there? So this soup is very tomato-based. It's a lovely blend. I thought it would be a bit dull, but it was, it was delicious. It's not something that I would personally serve, but it was tasty. With the soup getting a clean bill of health from the table, Hassan has a question for his host. What's the reference to the bin bags and recycling? I'm the director of a charity. 
What we do is we look around and we see what the community needs and then we start projects to meet that need. So I peeled off one layer of my onion skin and told them that I was a charity director, but they still don't know where the food came from. And at the end, I'm going to tell them about the food so it doesn't prejudice their taste. I think when you first meet Paula, you might think, oh, she's just a bit crazy. But then there are so many layers to her. You know, she has this quite important job. So I, I, I like people who are multifaceted like that. That was delicious, Paula, absolutely delicious. All the flavours were doing the talking, it. there was nothing. Mm. Just natural flavours. There's nothing unnatural in there. There's nothing, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's nothing supernatural in there. <laughs> <laughs> She's funnier than you. But... <laughs> oh, we'll see about that. Oh. <laughs> I think my starter went down OK with everybody, but they were a little bit nervous about the table decorations and what that meant. Well, maybe you can put them at ease with your mane. Paula fries her tail of beef. A splash of red wine. And in a separate pan, fries the chickpea burgers. The beef cooked, it's time to meet Dracula the knife. Right, that looks amazing. Whoops, OK, should have kept an eye on those. Burned your burgers. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just, we'll just... We'll just do that. Hang on a minute, isn't that the knife you just used for the beef? Oh, my God! I'm going to take that as a yes. Paula washes the meat juice tainted knife. They are going to have a very small taste of what should have been a magnificent meal for a vegan. I'm so sorry. Half a burger each, eh? Thank God for the wonky veg. God, now I've burnt the veg. Oh, heck! Let's turn everything off, shall we, before I burn the whole house down? That's a good idea. I never uh, cook vegan dishes. And I thought I'd really scored it, but I've gone and mucked it up. Paula loads the plates with her, um, roast veg. I'm right, I just, I just worked really hard on it. I know you did. Come on. Come on, you can do it. I'm down, but I'm definitely not out. Going for it. That's the ticket. And there it is, a load of wonky veg with half a chickpea burger and a side of cow. Oh, and a Brussels sprout. I did a really stupid thing. I spent all day making you a, a delicious vegan alternative to meat, and I did such a good job that I forgot it wasn't meat, and I picked up the knife I'd cut that with, and I sliced the top of the burger. So instead of two whole yummy plant-based burgers, you've got half of one each. Oh, don't worry about that. Oh and my I God, was, look at all this food. This yeah. I know, I know. I couldn't even hardly look at the mane. I could only look at Paula's face. And all I could think was, poor Paula. She looked absolutely broken. Enjoy. Oh, thank, thank you, Paula. Oh, so we just have a toast to our fabulous hostess. Yeah. Oh, yes. thank you. You can tell I'm passionate about the food. Mm. It upset me so much. How's I that? really like the chickpea burger. Really? It really works oh, well. Oh, I don't really know nice. whether to... To be happy or cry now that I didn't go right. Never mind. Some of the vegetables were burned and that could happen to anybody. My only thing I would say, Paula, a splash of gravy. Mm. That's what I wouldn't mind. Mm. Did you yeah. not make any gravy? The kitchen disaster. Did you lose your gravy as well? Oh, That's no, it, it should have been a lot more moist. I'm sorry. Don't say moist. I don't like the oh. word moist. <laughs> <laughs> it just creeps me out. I can't explain why I don't like the word moist. I don't like the connotations of it. I just think there are other words you can use. I'm, I'm sorry that the meal isn't more damp. <laughs> it's even worse. It's even worse. <laughs> it was a roast dinner, effectively. I'm not a huge fan of roast dinners. Back at the table, and Paula has a question for the non-meat eaters. What do you think about where your vegan alternative is shaped like meat? I think it's um, a little bit of fun, maybe. Hmm. So why would you want to eat something that exactly. resembles something that, that is not what you believe in? You yeah. Do you believe that eating animals is wrong. But I saw fake chicken breasts in the vegan aisle that look like chicken breasts. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. You just want to eat something tasty, mm -hmm. much like fish fingers, you know? People eat fish fingers, but they're not thinking about fingers or fish having fingers. I am. There's no point in serving up soy in just lumps, in different coloured lumps. Uh, who's going to buy that? <laughs>